Hello, everybody. Welcome to Popcorn Planet, powered by Fandom Wire. You can get all your scoops at fandomwire.com or Fandom Wire News on Facebook. So follow us there uh, for more stuff like this right away. Uh, I was excited to get another uh, scoop. Uh, same sources that told me about the Flash solo film uh, getting fast tracked, as well as the Snyder Cut information that a lot of you don't want to hear. It is what it is. Uh, but Phantom Wire scoops have been coming in to me, and I'm happy to report them. You can get the whole scoop over on fandomwire.com. Again, please follow us over at Phantom Wire News on Facebook. Great source. We've been putting a lot more news, reactions, and things over there. Uh, so if you like what I'm doing here, please go follow us over there as well. Uh, but this one came in. I'm going to go through the article and give you a little bit more of my insight. Uh, but please click the article. The link is down below. Uh, I'm going to go through a little bit of my insight of what this means, my thoughts on it. Uh, I want to be clear. I didn't want to spoil this film. I'm not trying to spoil this film. I'm not going to spoil the film. I am, though, however, going to share some minor plot points of what the main sort of idea of the Batman is about, what the main plot is that we're being told based on a script that they're shooting with because um, they've already started shooting. Uh, so that way we know a little bit more than what they've told us. I couldn't wait. I don't feel like this spoiled it for me, uh, but if you want to go in completely blind, I get it. You can tune out now, uh, check it back later, and see if we were correct. Uh, but that's uh, what one warning I want to make sure I put out there. Uh, but going to this article in uh, question, let's get to it, uh, what the Batman is actually about. Uh, and so now we have uh, information. So as you know, they've, they've put out some of these sets. This is his stunt double. This isn't Robert Pattinson. But he's been out shooting in London and Glasgow. Uh, mixed feelings on the suit from fans. I like it. I like that it's year – again, we're year two. In this film, that is confirmed. Uh, the the Bruce Wayne we're going to see uh, is very sim similar to uh, Frank Miller's Year One, uh, similar to Christian Bale's. Uh, he's younger uh, and he's been spending money all around Gotham City, uh, and he's a you know billionaire billionaire playboy. That Bruce Wayne type is in the script. However, the Batman version is much more detective leaning uh, and doing all this himself without the Rain Wayne resources. Um, he doesn't want to use those resources to get you know, to be figured out easily. So I, I, I assumed all that going in. So knowing that and, and seeing that, I like it. I, I'm okay with this. I, I need to see it in action. These bright images that clearly weren't like ready to go for the world to see. I, I think it's too early to sort of judge. I, I want to see him in motion and Robert Pattinson doing it. So, so far so for me, I, I'm into it. But getting into sort of what uh, Reeves has already sort of told us. Um, he told this to a uh, Hollywood reporter. It's very much point of view driven noir Batman tale. It's told very squarely on his shoulders, and I hope it's going to be a story that will be thrilling, but also emotional. It's more Batman in his detective mode than we've seen in the films. The comics have a history of that. He's supposed to be the world's greatest detective, and that's not necessarily been a part of what the movies have been. I'd love this to be one where, uh, where when we go on that journey of tracking down the criminals and trying to solve a crime, it's going to allow his character to have an arc so that he can go through a transformation. Uh, not going to get any of that, but I'm going to talk about the detective mode. Uh, so it is um, present day. It's year two. Um, it's he's still new to the job. Uh, he makes a point not to kill people. This is a Batman that doesn't kill. Um, and uh, as I told you, it's a, it's a Bruce Wayne similar to, to year one. Um, the plot itself, here we go. Uh, it revolves around an election year in Gotham City. Someone's killing off the mayor mayoral candidates. I said that right. Uh, one by one, leaving riddles behind each murder. These riddles won't make it hard for Batman fans. Obviously, no. We know because Paul Dano was cast as the Riddler, um, and so the Riddler is the main bad in this film. Now, as I say here in the article, a lot of people are sort of assuming that this was going to be a rogues gallery of villains taking on Batman, maybe even Arkham Asylum making a presence. It doesn't. Uh, and also sort of borrowing from that long Halloween storyline that a lot of people have been suggesting. It's not. Now, look, there are some themes in there. It's clear parts of that, you know, instead of uh, the holidays, they're going with sort of an you know, election. Uh, there are themes that feel like someone was definitely – you know, using some of it as inspiration, but it's completely different. It's not, a, don't, don't expect to see an adaptation of The Long Halloween. Um, and so uh, the Riddler is the main villain uh, in this story. That's the one who we're sort of f figuring out who is it, why is this happening, who's behind it, what's going on. Um, and it definitely, definitely feels more, not only noir, but detective mode. Uh, it reads more like Sherlock Holmes. Uh, and uh, Batman's Watson is uh, James Gordon, Captain Gordon. Uh, who is played by Jeffrey Wright. And so the two of them are out to solve this case and figure out what's going on with the Riddler. So he does have sort of a sidekick in this, in uh, Captain Gordon in, at this uh, timeline in Gotham City. Uh, and so uh, it allows them to really introduce Gotham City, uh, the crime syndicates, including John Turturro, who's playing Falcone, uh, and Zoe Kravitz's Selena Kyle, a.k.a. Catwoman, who once again is playing an anti-hero, uh, someone who's helping Bruce Wayne, 
um, you know, Batman and uh, someone who's helping Batman rather, and um, but also out for herself. You don't really, again, similar. Again, no spoilers. Just, uh, with Catwoman, as you always know, you never really know what her allegiance is going to be. She's out for herself, number one. Um, and so, uh, but in some of the films, she's just helping Batman. Uh, and then Colin Farrell is playing a character named Oz. Now, obviously, we all know that what that translates into with they t- said it's the penguin, it's Oswald uh, Cobblepot. Cobblepot. Um, and um, uh, he's written as a good guy in this, actually, is what's interesting about the film. Uh, and he's also in the running for mayor, trying to avoid being murdered. Uh, so I don't know if they're doing a, again, no spoilers, and I didn't really get into the, read the ending because I didn't want to spoil it myself. Um, I don't know what happens. I don't know what's going to happen there, if this is a build up to a bigger universe and we see. Who knows? Uh, but they are doing a different sort of take on the Penguin uh, by casting Colin Farrell as sort of a more likable, interesting person. Um, so take that as you will. He's uh, in the film, and he's running for mayor uh, and uh, not the villain. Um, so, uh, again, another interesting tidbit. There, uh, Harvey Dent was almost also in the film uh, because the, the, I'm wondering if the you know Oswald, uh, Colin Farrell, Penguin part will be more like you know the turn there because... I imagine they're going to have him turn at some point. I don't know how or when, um, but uh, I don't know how they're calling him Oz. So it's not like fans wouldn't be like surprised. Like, wait, what? So I don't know if that's going to be a similar play in this movie or later movies, TBD. Um, but uh, interesting, Harvey Dent was originally written in this movie as well and then uh, taken out at the last minute. Uh, and fun fact, as I was learning all this, uh, Batgirl and Penguin were both supposed to be in Birds of Prey, but similarly pulled out at the last minute. Uh, so take that as you will. Uh, so the film has a lot of set pieces, uh, action set pieces, and as Matt Reeves has just said, um, the current lockdowns helped him uh, get more prep time uh, to sort of really go through, uh, you know, plan better, as, as we reported here as well. Uh, the, the quotes were, were out there. Uh, it took me years to work on that story. It's very specific mystery noir. That's why it's been uh, thought out by me and my partners. Uh, and now he's talking about how the fact is that he can really uh, – uh, you know, oh, seeing the tone of this movie with the scenes we haven't done, which uh, here, sorry, the tone of the things happens anytime you shoot anything, the unexpected, happy accidents, and things you didn't quite expect. This is the lightning in a bottle for something that is alive. I would say that the changes really have to do with, oh, seeing the tone of this with these scenes, and we haven't done which connect to that part of the storyline. Feels like there might be an opportunity to explore some of that unexpected tone that we found. With, the, with these movies, you never have enough prep time because they're so complex, so enormous in so many ways. It also gives me a moment to think about larger sequences that have yet to come up and how I want to realize those. So I like that, you know, Matt Reeves is thinking ahead. And he's using this lockdown as a way to prep story beats, action set pieces, et cetera. Uh, he's filmed parts of it, so he's getting a sense of, okay, I can, I'm cutting together and seeing what this is. So a lot of this could still change. The story, I think, is pretty clearly locked. He's saying he's not, he's been working on the story for a while, and I'm not going to get into the spoilers or the bigger pieces of that storyline and the, the mystery behind what's going on and obviously other things that happen. Um, but uh, we know that's what it is. Election year, Batman is on the case, trying to solve it with Captain Gordon. Uh, the Riddler is the big bad that he's sort of going after, trying to figure out who he is and why. Uh, and that's that's the story of the Batman. I will say it feels a little simpler than I anticipated. Not a knock. But again, I really think this script screams as a sort of an opportunity for Warner Brothers and Matt Reeves to, like, to build a new world. The, the failure or success of this will fall upon the performances. Do these, these actors who are fantastic actors, including Robert Pattinson. I'm not knocking him out. I'm excited to see his take on this. Will Pattinson, Farrell, Kravitz, uh, uh, Dano, uh, even uh, all, of, all of them, everybody involved, all, uh, 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 Alfred, and uh, we have, uh, why am I blanking on uh, uh, Andy Serkis uh, and uh, Jeffrey Wright uh, we a lot, and uh, John Turturro. A lot of fantastic uh, performers in this that they could elevate this, even if the plot seems simple, it's just a simple detective story. Between them and the world building and the and the not necessarily the world building, we know this world, but the world creation, seeing a different version of it through Matt Reeves' lens uh, and his crew's lens, that to me is the real test of what we're looking for, the performances and the world that Matt Reeves builds as a director. Is it a world we want to go back to? I think that's really the question. And it does feel like Warner Brothers is letting him do his thing. He's on it. They're doing the standalone piece. Uh, but clearly there's got to be some pressure, whether he's accepting it or not, of Warner Brothers hoping this better be a launching pad for more Batman movies. I don't believe this film was made, regardless of what Reeves says, this film was not made to just be a one-off Batman one or two. Uh, this is clearly a Batman world and detective story that could be several films. Uh, and based off the Flashpoint story, which you have, if you haven't yet read, you can check in the, uh, I'll put it in my end description here, end uh, boxes. 
the, t the plan is to have that solo, uh, Flash solo film, uh, reset the timeline, uh, eliminating Snyder's film's timelines, and but still keeping parts of the members of the Justice League. It's Again, it's unclear if that means like the plot of Aquaman and Wonder Woman are going to change, but or if just they're going to keep those characters, or if their films will justify why they were not Flashpointed or whatever they're going to call it, uh, TBD, but it is clear that they're using the Flash film, which they've now, remind you, when I made that report about it, people were sort of rolling their eyes, but WB's pushing that movie up a month, not back a month, up a month. That only confirms and reiterates what I said of that's a huge priority for them, and they want it out there with or without Ezra Miller. They are moving quickly on that project. The script is ready. They want to get going as soon as they can film this. Uh, that's a huge priority to me. So I, don't, I wouldn't be a, uh, surprised if we get more intel on casting of whether they agree to keep Ezra or if they replace him or they're already taking some off-the-record calls to figure out who can be in there just in case. Uh, Flash is seemingly a big priority for Warner Brothers, and that recent news that it got pushed a month earlier uh, when they adjusted the Batman's release date and everybody else's only to me confirms what I've what, what I've been hearing is that the flash is very important because it allows them to sort of reset and move forward and again from what I've heard the Batman is intended to eventually be in there uh, again but I, I really do think that's in success right because DC has put out so many plans that have then come back scaled back uh the Black Adam Shazam, uh, the Black Adam uh, Justice Society of America plot sounds very fascinating. So if you haven't watched that one either, I got a lot of DC scoops. I'll put them all over here. And also I did a fantastic interview with William Sadler, uh, classic, ac amazing, legendary actors in Shawshank Redemption, Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, Hard to Kill with Seagal, Die Hard 2, uh, and a new series I'm calling uh, Filmography Autopsy where we uh, celebrate an actor's life. Not when they're dead, but when they're alive and go through their filmography talking about getting set stories and stuff. And William Sadler was a fantastic conversation, so go check that one out. I'm going to put that one up here uh, and then check out the other DC ones around me for more scoops. So there you go. I I'm, I'm excited about this film. It's a little simpler than I anticipated, uh, but uh, I, I got to say I'm, I'm very intrigued. I believe in this director. I believe in this cast. Uh, I hope this works. I hope, it's ex I hope people are going in, but I hope people go in, you know, with realistic expectations of this film uh, and going ready to see a detective Batman solving a, a, a case. Um, you know, we ex I think some audiences expect big, huge Batman type things. And we'll see if that one delivers that or if this one's more of a character study, which is which, which would be great. Because um, Nolan, I, th I feel like, walked that line really carefully where it was still a big, you know, IMAX spectacle cinema experience. Uh, but, you know, he was... he he also was doing a character studies there with those characters. I mean, it really was about the performances and the, and the overlying plots. Uh, so it seems like Matt Reeves is trying to do his own version of that. So what do you guys think? Does this plot make you more or less excited? Again, check out the other videos. It probably now they're popping in now. Uh, and as well as my interview with William Sadler, I uh, would love your support over there. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Stay tuned and make sure to follow fandomwire.com. Go over there for all your scoops, information, news. We're posting lots more over there, as well as Fandom Wire News on Facebook. Give us a like. Uh, more content coming that way. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll be live tonight, Tuesday, 9 p.m. Join us. See you.